Okay. We had finished by saying that this was the only verse that's initial creation. And then there was a change where the earth became chaos and wasteland. Okay? And then I finished by saying that all these verses that go down to verse 25, okay, all the way down here, are talking about six literal days of restoration. Now I'm going to focus on verse 25 in this episode, but what I want to do first is explain something. If it took six days, that is a miraculous event the Bible is explaining. Okay? You're obviously, as an atheist, not going to believe that. But the other thing that you need to know is that if you were trying to prove it out, you can't because in six days there's not going to be a geologic, any kind of geological evidence. Just like with the flood, the flood only lasted a year, so there's no geologic evidence of the flood. Now, that's going to be a, t a trouble spot for you, and I understand that. I'm not trying to convince you to believe the Bible. I'm just trying to show what it says versus what you're told it says by other atheists. I mean, really, I'm serious. You can pick up any translation you want, and you're going to find out that your translation reads pretty much like this one. This is the New American Standard. And you're going to have to ask yourself, oh, excuse me, I must be being scammed. Because it says created, and then this is a mistranslation, and the Christians don't get this right either. Because they won't look at the Hebrew. Okay? This should read, became chaos and wasteland. Keep that in mind. This is what it actually says. What you think of it is another story. But I want you to be acquainted with what it says so you can tell you're being scammed. There is no timeline here. There is no timeline here. It doesn't say when it became chaos and wasteland. There's no when disclosed anywhere in the Bible at all. Okay? So now we got to get down here, and this is, I wanted to focus on why you know that you're being scanned by Richard Dawkins and a lot of the other atheists who are selling you books. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be an atheist. I'm not trying to convince you to believe in the Bible. I'm trying to convince you that you're being scammed. That's all. You have many reasons why you should be an atheist. And I believe in atheism for a lot of reasons that I hopefully have already explained. But... This set of verses right here proves that Richard Dawkins and all the other atheists selling you books are scamming you right now. Because what is the central claim that is being made about atheism being right? Evolution. That somehow evolution proves that the world is more than 6,000 years old versus the Bible. Well, the Bible doesn't say that the earth is 6,000 years old. I proved that in the last increment. That's the first thing that just knocks the atheist claim out of the water. That doesn't mean you should believe the Bible, but it does mean you shouldn't believe the atheist claim. you got other reasons why you can be a, an atheist. You don't need that one because it's a big lie, as I just proved to you. But here's your other big reason why. Let's say you believe in evolution. Well, here's an evolutionary verse right there. Dawkins apparently can't even read English, which is his native tongue. See? The word after is really according to, meaning by species. You know, all the things that we say in evolution. Okay? After their kind. After its kind. That's the very heart of evolutionary so-called theory. Right there. Highlighted in blue. So, if you believe in evolution, the Bible's agreeing with you. So, how can you say that evolution proves that God doesn't exist? That verse highlighted in blue knocks down every single thing that Richard Dawkins says from the get-go. I don't believe in evolution, and I could argue something else about this verse. <clears throat> okay, but 
As evolution is described in so-called science, that verse agrees exactly with it. And there are a whole bunch of Christians who are evolutionists and a whole bunch of Jews who are evolutionists for that reason. According to their kind. In other words, by species, by genera, la di la. Everything you ever learned in science class about evolution is right here depicted. It's poetic language, it's simple language. And by the way, everybody for eons has already known about this. It's not a recent discovery in science. Even Aristotle wrote about it. Okay, everybody was trying, the Christians were trying to figure out how God did this. How? But see, you can just say, well, God decreed evolution. And then all of you guys who are basing your atheism on evolution are just shot down immediately. That's why I keep saying, towards a better atheism, you need to come up with, use other arguments. Don't use evolution as your proof. Because right there, evolution is corroborated in the Bible. Any Christian can argue that just using that verse. Okay? Now, when God says, let us make man in our image, well, that's, that's something else. Okay? That's saying that there's such a thing as soul life, an Im immaterial beingness to humanity. Okay? And Genesis 2 goes into detail about this particular verse. Genesis 2 is an elaboration on Genesis 1. It is not in the same order as Genesis 1. Genesis 1 is a summary chapter. Genesis 2 goes backwards and picks highlights out of Genesis 1 to explain. And it's chiefly to explain that verse that's highlighted in blue now. Okay, see, if you do your homework, then you don't get embarrassed. All right, the, the difference between the Bible and evolution is that God is, the Bible is saying that, that man is not strictly a biological entity. That God creates a soul and imputes it to the biological body and then man becomes a living creature. And that's specifically right here. See, that's the biology. And then this is the soul. And this here is not singular, it's breath of lives, plural two kinds of life. One that's a life that's compatible with God and one that's a life compatible with other humans. And man then becomes a living being. Now you can argue if you want to as an atheist about whether or not there is an immaterial component to your humanity. And that's a valid thing to argue. Okay? So I'm not trying to say you shouldn't be an atheist. I'm trying to separate the scam from the real atheist arguments that you ought to be focusing on, if you're going to focus on it at all. I mean, you don't have to focus on anything if you don't want. You don't believe in God, that's your prerogative. But the difference in the Bible versus science is that God's saying that there is an immaterial nature that makes you human. It is not the dust of the ground. That goes back to the dust. That's not the real you that the real you is what he creates at birth not before okay Christians are too dumb to live on that too my pro-life blasphemy series shows um, many Bible verses explaining it that life begins at birth not before and that this is the precedent for it you can argue whether or not you as a human being are strictly biological the Bible says you're not now, whether you agree with that or not, well, that's a valid debate. But don't say that evolution proves that God doesn't exist, because this is a, a verse you could use as, as the decree for evolution. Because it says, according to their kinds. Well, that's exactly what evolutionary theory is saying. Okay? Modern evolutionary theory is stupid compared to what it was 50 years ago. 50 years ago, it was much more accurate. There is a very severe difference between adaptation and evolution. But I'm trying to stay out of that right now. Because this is such simple language. All you have to do is say any definition of evolution you want to you name, 
and here it is, decreed by God. Well, then all of your arguments that evolution proves God doesn't exist are completely eradicated because this is a decree for it and a lot of Christians view it that way so do a lot of Jews so if you restrict your beating up on Christians to the stupid ones who say that the earth is 6,000 years old and you're as dumb as they are and you don't know these these verses and what they really say then you're a stupid person objecting to another stupid person and that's why Richard Dawkins is as dumb as it comes because he's basically saying that evolution, which is decreed right here, he's saying that evolution proves God doesn't exist. Hello? Can he not read this even in English? So he's scamming you. He's either too dumb to live and you shouldn't buy his books, therefore, or he's lying. Take your pick. Because this verse proves that he's either too dumb to live or lying. End of story. And if you're going to base your arguments against Christians on the on a claim that the earth is 6,000 years old, well, they're too dumb to live. They can't read this text. And then you're just as dumb as them because, hello, this is plain text. You should be able to read it, too. And the mistranslation here, there's no excuse for not knowing that that's a mistranslation. It's been known as a mistranslation for hundreds of years. And like I said, even 40 years ago, when I was first learning it in the Hebrew, I knew that this was a mistranslation. So how come Richard Dawkins doesn't know that? How come your average atheist who's arguing the sick against the young earthers doesn't know that? They're not doing their homework, so they're scamming you. You understand? You're being scammed because people aren't doing their homework on just that, even that part of it. They're not doing their homework on this and comparing it to Pangea. They're not doing their homework on this verse, which, hello, right in plain text, there you go, evolution. Okay, now, I want to close and say this one more time. Just because I'm showing you how science, modern science, agrees with the Bible, does not mean, repeat, does not mean you should believe in the Bible. If you're going to believe in the Bible based on its agreement with science, then you, you, you're really too dumb to live. The right reason to believe in the Bible or God is not related to this stuff. Because I'm sorry, people thousands of years ago already knew what I'm telling you now. Anybody, any human being on the earth who had a smattering of education about, you know, the past, or a smattering of education about biology knew this stuff. So that doesn't, this, this whole text here does not mean that God wrote it by itself just because it agrees with the knowledge of science. Because the science was known thousands of years ago. I would not base my belief in God or my belief in the Bible on the fact that these verses agree with what we call science today. And I don't think you should either. There's only one way to get real proof that God exists, and only one good way. You look up at the ceiling and say, Hi, God, did you actually write this book? If so, I need proof. Because you should get proof from God directly. He's immaterial. You can't see, touch, taste, or feel Him. And if you are, as is said here, made in the image of God, that's 127, see? God created man in his own image. If you're really created in the image of God, then God is set up inside your soul. A means of talking to you where you can actually hear him and know that you're not hallucinating. Wouldn't you wanna know what that is if it's true? Just even out of curiosity, you should wanna know if that's true. And it says that it's true right here that God made you directly, you personally. He put the breath of life in you at birth. That's what this text says, and there's 500 other verses in the Bible saying the same thing. In English, they usually have the translation of, I called you, I formed you, I made you. If you're looking, at, if you're searching in an English Bible, those many of the verses have that phrase in them. 
Okay, if God really made you directly, then you have an immaterial component to your nature that makes you human being. And therefore you can prove God. It's not your knowledge of God and whether you can know God on your own, it's whether he can cause you to know him. Now aren't you are you curious about that possibility? If you are, then ask the ceiling, hi, this this book, it's got a lot of problems in it, and everybody's arguing over this Genesis thing all the time. I need proof of you, God, if you really exist. That's the only way that any Christian has ever gotten to know God. So I would suggest that's what you do. Meanwhile, if you don't feel like doing that yet, or you think that that's a stupid thing to do, fine. Be an atheist, but don't be a stupid atheist. Bible does not say how old the earth and the universe is. The Bible says that it, the earth became, just the earth, became chaos and wasteland, corrected from the Hebrew. The Bible says that the whole earth was covered in water and so does geological plate tectonic theory starting with Pangaea. The Bible can be read to say that God authored evolution because the Bible does not say when God created, how long did he choose to take it? What if he said, evolution be? And then all the things that are in science are. You wouldn't know. Because the text does not tell you whether he just did it instantaneously or whether he did it by a decree and then he let things run their course. The Bible does not tell you how he did it. Christians have been trying to figure it out for 2,000 years how he did it. The only thing the Bible says that's a specific period of time is starting right here after the earth became chaos and wasteland. During a six-day period he restored he restored the earth. Okay? Right here. Okay. But you'll notice he's issuing commands after their kind made them after their kind well what constitutes making them after their kind if he just speaks it he could just order hi evolution begin you know you've got that big gap in evolutionary theory you know in the pre-cambrian or the cambrian period okay well maybe this is the cambrian period that post-cambrian period or you know just where that there's that big gap I don't know but if you look at just the text the text can be read that way to fit alright it can be read that way to fit so why doesn't Richard Dawkins and all the atheists making money off you guys buying their books why don't they admit that this is the language in there you know why they don't admit it because they expect that you're not going to do your homework and check what they say so they can make money off you and I submit that that's being scammed. All right. Now I'm not saying that you should believe in the Bible, and I'm not saying that you should believe this is evolution. But I am saying that the text says it. And I am saying that if you want to believe in God or not, then you need some other, do choose some other basis than the false criterion of evolution disproving God because it obviously doesn't accomplish that goal. There are plenty of reasons to be an atheist. The best reasons are to argue about why evil is in the world. Okay, that's a real hard question to answer. And if you want to get proof of God's existence, you can only get proof by asking the ceiling and then waiting for this, you know, flying spaghetti monster to talk back to you. If you're willing to do that, do it. If you're not willing, don't. Peace out.